the gospel, when we talk about the gospel, we shouldn't mix it with any other thing that the people have preached, have served, have worshipped. Because before Jesus preached the gospel, the people have what they are serving as the word of God. Moses, the prophets like Azar, like Jeremiah, mentioned their names. Like the Psalms, uh, Solomon even in Proverbs, Solomon in uh, Jeremiah in Lamentations, and a whole lot of them have spoken to the people, and this was what the people were serving and worshipping in those days. They have them in the scrolls that they've written and called them scriptures till today. They call the Holy Scriptures. Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, from your childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which could make you wise unto things which are preached fit in Christ Jesus. Wise unto salvation. So they were there. They, they, um, I always said to people that if you don't understand the scriptures, and this is the problem in the church today, and from so many preachers to do, they don't even understand the scriptures, not to talk about the gospel. If you don't understand the scriptures, it's very difficult even to understand the gospel because most of the things Jesus said, he didn't explain, but they are in the scriptures. So, if you know the background of the scriptures, you can understand what he was saying to the people. We give examples the other time here. We talk about when he said something like 70 times 7, but in the other time we met, we were explaining that. Where he came from, the 70 times 7. And so many other things. But he told the people that what you are hearing and seeing some prophets and righteous people had wanted to see and to hear them. Matthew chapter 13, he said, what you, you are, blessed are your eyes and your ears. He so said, blessed are your eyes that they see and your ears that they hear. For great prophet, let's read at it, so that because we will try to just make what the gospel wanted to be, we we'll make out of the gospel what actually the gospel means. Because the gospel is not like any other word that we preach to the people. In Matthew chapter 13, read from verse 16. Matthew 13, 16 said, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your eyes, for they hear. For verily, so ears, for they hear. Your ears hear. The people have ears, but they can hear. They have eyes, but they can see. For verily I say unto you that many prophets, verse 17, and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. These were prophets. Jesus didn't say they were false. Righteous men, they were not sinners. But God did not give it to them, those things. It didn't come in their days. But they said, we are hearing them. So, let's prophets, plural, prophets, many prophets and righteous men. There was a time that he was talking to them in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, and said, concerning John the Baptist, of all born by women, John is the greatest. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. And when he was saying that, he was referring to Isaiah, sorry, Elijah. The least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. He didn't say kingdom of God. There's a difference. <laughs> I think we have talked a lot about the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. It's a big difference here. It's just simple. Let's say we have Germany. We have citizens. But in the days when we have kingdoms, not all of them are royals. So the kingdom actually belongs to some people. They are the royals. But everybody is a citizen. 
So when we say kingdom of God, kingdom of God is, Jesus called it my father's kingdom. It's for his sons. My father's kingdom. It is for my father. But everybody can be in that kingdom. So the whole thing with the kingdom of heaven, but actually when you say kingdom of heaven, it means that God is ruling from heaven. God is ruling, covering now all his creation, now giving instruction from heaven. But it says something to people who believe in Christ. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So what you burn here on earth, will be burn in heaven. What you lose, we lose in heaven. Well, not all people in the kingdom of heaven will have that privilege to see that, oh, I'm the kingdom of heaven, so everything I burn should be bound because I'm the kingdom of heaven. He said, you, I'll give it to you. Why well, was it given to them? He said to, the, to, to Peter, when he see, Peter saw that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, my father revealed that to you. The father told Peter, this is Christ, my son, is the son of the living God. And Jesus said, it's my father who revealed it to you. There are people who are preaching today that Jesus is the father, which means they are, want to say that the father is even a liar for saying that Jesus is his son. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, Peter said to him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's what Peter said. Verse 17, Jesus said, my father revealed this to you. And somebody is saying that Jesus is the father. So who is lying? The father or the person who is saying Jesus? See, the point here is everything is in the Bible. Don't let anybody deceive you. So when Peter said that, he told him that upon this I will build my church. So my church is not going to be built upon telling me that I'm the father. My church is going to be built, seeing me that I'm the son of the living God. That's what he said. And the gate of hell will not prevail against that church. So it is not coincidence when you see Christians being destroyed. It comes from the things they are teaching them. But if we get the true knowledge concerning the church that Jesus built, he said the gate of the gates Buddha, the gates of hell will not prevail against that church. And this is what he said, the verse 19, that, that I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven rules everywhere. And the keys will make you that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And what you lose will be lost also in heaven. We'll lose here on earth kingdom of heaven. That's what he said. But then he told a guy called Nicodemus, who was the Pharisee in John chapter 3, that unless he's born again, he can't enter into the kingdom of God. He didn't say heaven. Unless you are born again. So who are those who can enter into the kingdom of God, not heaven? Who are they? Those who are born. So who are they? sons of God, unless you are born again. Because born again here is born unto God now. Because then John 1, 12 and 13 says, those who receive Christ, they're given the power to become sons, sons of God. These people were no more born by flesh. Because beginning, we were born by flesh, our parents, or blood, or man, but of God. So this Persons who are even the least in the kingdom of God, uh, kingdom of heaven, these are people who are born of God. But then he says something in Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24 that the kingdom of heaven is like, it, it explains the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And when men slept, his enemy came and sowed tiles. So in the kingdom of heaven, you can have anything, so many things. Not all in the kingdom of heaven are good, or even of God. Satanic children can also be found in the kingdom of heaven. 
That is why Jesus said, people who receive the gospel, they will cast out the devils. Why? Because, and then he called them, since they have received the gospel, they have become the sons of God. Because that's what the gospel intends to do. First Peter chapter 1, 23 and 25 said, the gospel is an incorruptible seed, and it's called the word of God. And this gospel give birth. First Peter 1, 23 says, being born again, not by the corruptible, but the incorruptible seed, the word of God, which abide forever. This word abide forever. And he said, this is the word of the gospel which is preached to you. That was what Peter said. In fact, there was a time that he went to the house of Colonials and he started to preach and said, this word I'm going to preach to you, it was preached to the children of Israel after the baptism which John preached. After. Not before. And when he was preaching this word in the house, do you know what they came upon the people? Holy Spirit, that's why he described him. Holy Spirit came upon those who hear the word. Acts chapter 10, 36 and 37, then 44. Acts chapter 10. He, he explained the word he came to preach to them, that this word was preached after the baptism who John the Baptist preached. And the, John the Baptist was the last of the prophets. So the gospel has nothing to do with anything that was preached from Genesis to Malachi. Because it was after even John the Baptist, who came even late. And when he was preaching, spirit came upon the people who were hearing. Because they showed certain signs. That they were praising God. And the first sign that began to call God Father. What had happened? He said, because giving birth to sons of God. And they begin to call God Father. Because Jews never call God Father. He never call God. If it's him call God Father, maybe then they are describing something else. They are not saying that God has children. But the gospel came upon the person and they begin to praise God and call God Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. So we are seeing a different spirit. And so what spirit is that? Who the the arch 1044 is calling the Holy Ghost. Whose who spirit? Do you think, what, what kind of spirit is that? Because if you are Holy Spirit, you can't say anything. Can't be, the spirit of God, even the spirit of the Father himself is holy. The spirit of Christ is holy. The Holy Ghost is also there. But what spirit came upon the people when they were hearing the gospel? Who can have an idea about this spirit? They hear the gospel, the spirit came upon them. And they begin to call God Father and praising God in a special way. And I'm saying, what do you think will be that spirit? The spirit of what? Baptism. The spirit baptized them. Yeah, it came upon them and baptized them. What spirit, that? What spirit do you think will be that? The spirit of the Father. Who can have another one? The spirit of Christ. You're fine, but what is the spirit of Christ? The spirit of the Son. God sent the spirit of his Son into the people when they are hearing the gospel. That gave birth to them, become the sons of God. That spirit is the spirit of Christ. So when we are hearing the gospel, the spirit of Christ, and that spirit of Christ is the spirit of the Son of God. It's not the spirit of the Father. It's the spirit of the Son of God. He is the spirit of Christ. The spirit, that is why Peter said you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So don't let anybody confuse that in the spirit of the Father. No, in the spirit of the Son, Christ coming upon you. The spirit of the Father is there. He will be with you when you have the spirit. When the spirit of his Son is in you, the spirit of the Father is also there because the spirit of the Father is also in the Son. And there's a confusion here. People begin to preach and say that there's no other God but only Jesus. So the Father is no Father. Why? Because Jesus said the Father is in me. And they said, the Father is, in, is not in heaven. There's nothing like heaven. But the dwelling place of God is in Christ or in human being. Because he said, I'll make a temple and I'll dwell inside the temple. God, the true God, is omnipresent. He's not dwelling in one place at the same time. He dwells in so many places at the same time. Jesus told them that anybody who sees me has seen the Father. Why? Because the Father is in me. And I'm also in him. 
That's what he taught in John chapter 14 from verse 8. The Father is in me. Verse 12, he said, I'm going to the Father. So you have to think that there's a Father somewhere and there's a Father also in him. And he said, the words I speak, it's my Father in me who does it. And you can do the same, which means when you also believe the Father is also in you, just like me, because you have become the Son. He said, I am in them and you are in me. This is what Jesus said. John 17, 23. But he said in verse 3, that John 17, this is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So if you can't know this difference, you can't have eternal life. If you say there's only one God, and that is Jesus Christ, there's nothing like Father. You are deceiving people. It's not the truth. And to show in the people's life and their environment, Satan will take over everything because the reason why the gospel is preached is to give birth to sons of God who have the spirit of Christ. And they are called peacemakers, these sons of God. And they have special work on earth. The days when the apostles were preaching, they used the word adoption of sons. Galatians 4, 4 and 5, and Romans 8, 15, adoption of sons. If you say somebody is adopted as a son, it means you are preparing the son. The Greek word is heotosis. It heos. Heos means son tosis, preparing the son. It means you are preparing the son that when you are not there, he will take over the throne. Preparing the son to be a king. That's what it means. Adoption of a son. A king may have so many sons, but there's one son who will be preparing that when he's not there, he will take over from him. So he adopted that son. It doesn't mean that it's from somebody. It's, it's the Greek word there is preparing the son to be a king in the future. So that was that apostles were using that word because those places, they wrote their adoption. They wrote them in Greek, not in Hebrew. And when you read something like Romans chapter, Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, when Jesus was in heaven too, the 24 elders and the four beasts began to sing a song, one particular song. Oh, you have redeemed us from candles, families, languages, tribes, and nations. And you have made us kings and priests unto our God. And we shall reign on earth. The word shall is the future tense, isn't it? Again, in Ephesians 2, verse 7, Apostle Paul said, in the ages to come, God is going to show forth his riches and his glory on you, in you. He's talking to the saints. For you are saved by grace through faith, not of your works. It's the gift of God. Because God is preparing you for a work. When they were saying these things, the reason why they were saying it in years, ages, years to come, was because the kingdom of God cannot rule at that time. Kingdom of God, not kingdom of heaven. The reason why kingdom of God or even... Because the kingdom of God is going to be governed by the sons of God. And the whole realm, from the day Jesus came, he said, the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. From the day Jesus came, the kingdom of heaven is beginning to rule here on earth. But everybody is fine in the kingdom. He said, kingdom of God is even like ten virgins who took their lambs, five were wise, five were fools, kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, enemies so tasked inside, so kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of heaven came when Jesus was on earth. Then by the sons are being prepared to rule by the power of their father as kings. This will be the kingdom of God. Do you understand that? The kingdom of God will be governed by the sons of God. But then he put them in future tense, ages to come. They shall reign here on earth. Why was he saying that? If you go back to the scriptures in Daniel chapter 2, a vision was shown to Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel interpreted it. 
He came to the lake. He said, like the fourth kingdom. And then the feet, the toes, made up of kingdoms that are iron and clay. That's my powerful kingdoms and then weak kingdoms. At the feet. Now, this leg, the leg here, that was the iron kingdom, represents the Roman kingdom. That was the last of the four kingdoms from the head to the feet leg. That was the last kingdom. From that, there won't come any one particular kingdom which is ruling the whole earth, like what happened from the book of Nazar, Medi Persians, and then what again? The, another kingdom came, Medi Persians, Greeks came, and then Rome. There won't be such kingdom again. Like in the Medi Persians, the king called Ahasuerus, after Nebuchadnezzar, was the Babylonian. That was the first kingdom. He was governing everywhere, and the kingdom was ruling from the whole of Asia to Africa. Those days, Europe and America were not developed. There were not so much people there. The kingdom was mostly on the Asia and African continent. Then after that, Rome came. Rome is Greek and Rome are European kingdoms. They took over. After Greek came the Roman kingdom. And then a German collapsed the Roman kingdom, finally. And the same German collapsed the European kingdom when they were ruling over the people. Through the world wars, you understand, that <laughs> happened. So these are where all divine. But the, the thing is that the, the leg, which is the iron kingdom, represents Rome, has to go away. They had to go away. And then their feet will be formed, the nations. So it's the time of the nations that the kingdom of God will be formed. So the days they were preaching, the Roman kingdom was ruling. You know when Jesus came, the Roman kingdom was there. The Roman kingdom ruled after Jesus, 476 years before he collapsed. 476 AD is when the Roman kingdom came to an end. 476 AD. The last apostle, John, Apostle John died 100 AD, 99 AD. So when they died, the Roman kingdom was still ruling. When they died, 376 years later, before the Roman kingdom came to an end. And then there was something called colonization and those things that led to the small kingdoms joining together to form nations. A nation is made up of kingdoms, small, smaller ones, they join together form a nation. Like, for example, if you take maybe Ghana, you have the Ashanti, you have so many kingdoms. There, there were kingdoms. The kingdoms started from a one father. So a father and his great descendants, they form a kingdom. Because the sons of that father will take over that kingdom. And today they have kings. When the father dies, the son, first son will take over as a king. It's there. They are called kingdoms. But a nation is coming together of some of these kingdoms to form a territory called a nation. And these were these nations that weak and strong form in this time. This is when the kingdom of God is created. And so Jesus said, this gospel shall be preached the last days before the end will come. In other words, the kingdom of God will come out. And this is the time they are needed. So when you read the gospel, the word of God is saying that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. It's talking about another way of salvation through people becoming sons of God. And these sons of God are not simply male human beings because it's the spirit that makes you the son of God, the spirit, the spirit of Christ. So even when you're a woman and come into you, the spirit comes into you, you become the son of God. God, it's, it's not defined by who you are. It's defined by the Spirit. So Romans 8, 10 says, if Christ in you, your body is dead, and God intentionally put death there, so that anybody who commits sin is already dead. Because he wants the Spirit of his Son to take over in the days to come. So when the Spirit of Christ comes into you, your body, you, it doesn't matter again, because that body is dead. Christ takes over. So you become, that's why you become the son of God. Your body only becomes just like a house you are staying in. But you, the spirit in you is righteous and is life. 
Because the spirit of Christ becomes your spirit and your life. And it's not for nothing. You've now been prepared to rule over the kingdom of God. Don't, for, kingdom of heaven. Don't forget that the kingdom of heaven, Satan and everybody is there. Enemies of God, everything is thrown there. This is why the kingdom, the sons of the kingdom of God are important. The reason why they are peacemakers is that they will order, they will control this kingdom of heaven. That Satan's cannot do whatever they want. So as I said, as I tell them, one to nine, they, they call them the blanche. They will come out, and guess what? A wolf and lion, they will lie down peacefully with even sheep and goats. They can't take, eat them. Why? Because that blanche, and you know who Jesus described as blanche? John 15, 5, I am the man, you are the blanches. So he's talking about those who receive the gospel, who receive my spirit and become sons of God. You are the one going to take what, do what as I said, not the man, it's the blanche. So we don't just receive the gospel and say in our countries and then we think the bandits are killing us. Gavin, what are you doing? No, because that's why you are the son of God. And it's all about what we are doing in the churches, trying to impress people by ways. Trying to let people know that we know the Bible. If you, if you are battered, you are being seen. That kind of things. Rhetoric will not bring anything. If you are not teaching them the power. You come and then you see a pastor as more anointed than you. Then why are you receiving the gospel? Because the gospel makes you the son of God just like Christ. Not like any human being. The gospel. Hebrews chapter 2. Look at verse 10 and 11. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. What is, what is there? You will become him. You become, become him. It's talking about Christ because verse 9 is talking about Jesus, who through the grace tasted there for everybody. For it is him, this Christ, who are all things, and by whom are all things, to bring what? How many sons? Many. To bring them unto glory, the captain of their salvation, yes, true suffering. That's why Christ suffered. Verse 11, that he would too. Both he, who is that he there? Who is that he there? Both he, Christ, who sanctified these people to make them sons of God. And though these sons of God who have been sanctified by him, they are all one, that they are the same. So for his cause, he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So when Jesus was coming to the earth, he described himself as the only begotten son. That's why he told Nicodemus in John 3, 16. The only begotten son. But here, he's not only begotten son. Because there are so many sons there, you know. Bring them, make them like himself. So if you read Romans 8, 29, he said, he's the firstborn among many brethren. Firstborn, not only begotten son. Firstborn, because he said those who are called to God, they are called to conform to him. Who is now become firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8, 29. So you don't just receive the gospel and sit down at your mumu. You don't know you need it. You become like Christ. And for what purpose? Jesus become the firstborn. So, and, and the, and the, the, the church you are in is described as the church of the firstborn, the firstborns. Hebrews chapter 12, to begin from verse 22. The church is described as the church of the firstborn. Because the church is the body of Christ. It's not two bodies, one. So when you are in the church, you are in that body. Of the firstborn. So even though you are so many, many sons, but all of you are firstborn, which means all of you sit in the same throne. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6, seated together with him on the throne. Because all of you have become firstborn since you have the same body. Ephesians 5:30, we are the same body. We are eating his bones and flesh. 
That is what you're supposed to see yourself. This is what is said. Many have desired to see what you are seeing. If you can see yourself as the son of God and firstborn son, what does it mean to be a firstborn son? It means you have all the authority. Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth is given to me. You just have to say the same thing. Because you are just like him, also firstborn. So all power is given to you by your father, both in heaven and on earth. That's what you are. So he said, those who believe in my name, they will cast out the devils. And I hear some preachers, one preacher saying that, who are you, can cast devil? Go and read Daniel chapter 9. Do you know what called principality? You don't need to know whether there's a beast or something. It's a devils, no matter what they are. You don't have to know and see how many kinds of angels, what is their powers. That is not your business. Once you have power over them, no matter what they are, they can come and show their face or show their skin. We don't care about them. Cast them away. That's what it means. And if you can do that, and you see there are witches and wizards coming like bandits, armed robbers to kill you, then they will kill you because God is not going to do that. If you receive the gospel, God is giving power to you. Do you know what Jesus said? John chapter 5, verse 22. John 5, 22. Maybe you don't understand what it means to be the son of God. Read what Jesus said. Because whatever Jesus is saying, it's exactly what you are. That's what he said in John 14, 12. What I do, you can do even do greater. He said in John 14, 12. John 5, 22, what did he say there? The father does what? He doesn't judge anybody. Whether you are good or bad, the father will not judge anybody. But what? What? Is, what? Continue. He has committed, he has committed what? All How many judgments? To who? And you are the son of God, isn't it? Yes. Like Jesus. Yes. So who do you think God wants you to do? Jesus said in the kingdom of heaven, there's all kinds of things. Enemy has shown everything they want. But the father, our father, he will not judge anybody in that kingdom of heaven. He has committed all judgment to the son. That was why the Hebrews were saying to the Lord, you know, Jesus said that all what is written in the scripture concerning me. And they said, to fall into the hand of the Lord is terrible. And people were saying that, oh, God is love. Who say God is love? And why did he kill people in the Old Testament? And you people are preaching another God. Of course, the God we are preaching is different. Jesus said the people did not hear from him, nor even seen his shape. And John the Baptist even said, he said, nobody has seen that God before. It's only Jesus who knew him. John 1, 18, and then John 5, 36 down to 40. Jesus said, everything in that scriptures there concerning me. Why was he killing? Because he was the judge. It is not his father. You see, when we don't understand things like this, Jesus is a terrible person. Let me tell you. He will kill, he will destroy everything. In Revelation 19, from verse 11, read that place and see what when he can, what he did. See blood flowing everywhere. Because all judgment is given to the Son. And he said, you know, Apostle Paul preaches on this, don't revenge, leave everything to God to do it. You see, they are preaching like the Pharisees. Revenge, you are the one to revenge. Because their judgment is on you. First Corinthians 6, 1 to 4. He said, don't you know that we are going to judge the world and judge angels? He was saying that in those days, because the kingdom of God was not there. The kingdom of heaven was not reigning in his days. They all died, still Roman kingdom was ruling. So today, you are the one judging the world and judging angels. Today, as we are talking. And this will continue until Christ returns. Because you know what? In the scriptures written, God said to my Lord, sit here on my right hand until I make your enemies your foot too. So Jesus is seated, isn't it? Yeah. So who is working? 
The father is working. The father, the sons. Yes. So let's finish it by Philippians chapter 2. Let me quickly from verse 9 to 16, then we come to an end. Philippians chapter 2. God also has highly exalted him, who? Christ. And I've given him with a birth every name. That's at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, things on earth. Yes. And every knee. Every tongue, okay. So I confess to the glory of the Father. Verse 12. Wherefore, whether as always obey, as obey but in my absence, work out what? With fear. For who is working in you and to do do all things without what? And disputing. The Son of God. Do you understand what is written there? You are the one to bring things under the feet of Christ. That's why the name is given to you. You see, and what you're supposed to do is to make sure that Christ is glorified. If you want to be glorified, you have to glorify Christ because that's your body. That's who you are. When you begin to say that, no, these things, Christ has to reign here. I will not allow these things to happen. And you begin to make sure, you speak in your heart, Christ has to be acknowledged. Because people said they don't even believe in Jesus. You have to cause them to believe. You see, not to cause them to believe the gospel. Bring the hand of God upon them. Punish them for them to know that Christ governs. If you allow them, let me tell you something. In this world, if you don't know, let me tell you what is in the world. What Jesus is called the enemy sold these things there. We see, they call something that maybe you hear about secret societies, Illuminati, powers working, their principalities, they are working. In governments of the world, in trade, in finances, religions, everywhere. You have from today know that you have to order them. Everything they have stolen, you have to make sure. Don't allow, you see, Jesus said in the kingdom of heaven, the enemy so bad cars. Matthew 13 from verse 24. You are the one to control them. Don't think that there's something called immunity is, is occult master. This big dad, you don't know this about here. Very powerful. You can, people are dying. Yeah. Then you are afraid, you. Then why are you the son of God? Because you are the one to bring that thing down. Don't let people just preach nice words to you as if God will do it. God will not do anything because he doesn't judge anybody. All judgments should come from you. So when you are praying, know the words you are speaking. And when you don't have what you need, don't blame God, don't dispute because it is your fault. You have to understand this. Let's turn our feet. We want to pray.